We have seen the picture of the harbor of St. Rouge today already twice. And Jonathan Diret uh, was talking about its influence on microalgae connectivity. Um, if you're wondering who's responsible for this, this kind of structures, it was probably a coastal engineer. Also, you raised the interesting question, what do, we, what do we want to protect at our coast? So if you are the kind of person who goes to the coast for summer vacations, or you are lucky enough to have a house or a summer house at the coast, you may have wondered who's responsible to design that you or to protect this um, piece of land against flooding or wave impacts or against sea level rise. So this is partly the Coastal Engineering Research Group at Ghent University. And my name is Max Streicher and I will talk about um, physical models in coastal engineering. Uh, one of the guiding questions in coastal engineering is how to protect our coast against sea level rise. And a uh, typical way to investigate this is to look at the physical model. A physical model in coastal engineering is mostly a wave flume, a channel filled with water. We create waves on one side, we put the structure on the other side, and then we investigate the wave structure interactions in the flume. So a wave flume can be used to monitor the processes, to vary parameters in a controlled environment, and to produce insights in a rather cost-effective way. If we consider the scale effects and the model effects right, we create similarity, which means that we have the same processes and governing equations in reality as in our model. Let me give you a practical example. The Valava experiments, the acronym stands for wave loads on walls, were conducted at our department. And it's basically the same situation my colleague Vincent Covey described earlier, with a, with a long beach, with a dike, a promenade, and a wall on the end. And we want to know what are the impact forces on this wall. So we decided to go for a large scale physical model. And we put a lot of sand in one of the largest wave flumes of the world on the upper right picture and equipped this room with a lot of measurement devices to measure the water surface elevation, to measure the impact pressures and the direct force response of the wall. And the device highlighted in the green circle on the upper right will be discussed later. Let's have a look at one of the tests. So here you see the waves which are generated on the other side of the flume. They travel over the beach, they break, and then they overtop the dike and create this clap against the wall. And this is definitely what you don't want for your summer apartment, of course. So our aim is now to uh, observe these processes which are happening there and to apply the latest measurement technology to measure these processes. This was, for example, done with a laser scanner mounted at the side flume wall which was used to determine the distances for the objects in the flume on a line scan. And we could come up with plots like on the right side where you have the time sequence and in blue, luckily we have colors now, we in blue the water surface and red the hard structures as the beach, the dike, the promenade and the wall. And there you can clearly see from up to below there's a wave approaching, a second wave already reflected at the dike and then these waves collide and a new wave overtops the dike and creates the clap on the wall. With this kind of data sets, we are able to come up with process models to link our wave patterns or bore patterns, how we call a bro bro broken wave, to certain impact types at the wall. This information is then uh, interesting to know if we design for structures at the coast, if we have to design in a dynamic way or in a static way. And to wrap up my presentation, physical models are used in coastal engineering to derive the process insights needed to create a safe environment, to create a safe living environment at the coast. Thank you very much.